Hi there. So we are going to continue our study through James. We'll start with chapter 2. Um, I'm using the New Living Translation and the New International Version, which are original transcripts from the, from the original scrolls. So we will start um, over here. James 2. And this is very prevalent for today's stuff. It just shows they had the same issues, you know, 2,000 years ago as they do today. My dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? Hmm. Do we do that? Yeah, everybody does. Especially, I mean, the government now is, is trying to make one particular race of people above all others. Um, I think they have ulterior motives for that. But we'll continue. For example, suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry, and another comes in who is poor and dressed in dirty clothes. If you get special attention to a good seat, and a good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor one, you can stand over there or else sit on the floor. Well, doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? Mm -hmm. That is absolutely true. And that happens, you know. I mean, look at the, the people today, you know. The, the richest people in the world get the most respect. They get the most airtime on TV, you know, because, you know, honestly, they have ulterior motives. Mm -hmm. And some people, you know, some rich people, one in particular seems to always try and hang out with what he calls the real people you know he'll go into a town and he'll go to the McDonald's or he'll go to a little tiny barbecue place and just talk to the regular people and he, and he loves them and there, there are rich people that are like that you know Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? But you dishonor the poor. Isn't it, isn't it the rich who oppress you and drag you into court? Mm, yes, even today. Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ, whose noble name you bear? Boy, that's the truth. Well... Wow. We're going to highlight that, too, because that's like, you know, boom. The rich do oppress us. You know? They try and control you. They try and turn you into, you know, mindless followers. Even today. <laughs> this has been around forever, huh? Yes, indeed. It is good when you obey the royal law, as found in the scriptures. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you favor some people over others, you're committing a sin. You are guilty of breaking the law. In our Constitution, it says all people, it says all men, but man mankind is created equal. You know, and they got it. When the forefathers wrote the Constitution, they got it right out of this, right out of this Bible right here. You know, not this Bible, they got it out of these scriptures. You know, you, but if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin and breaking the law. For the person who keeps all of the laws except one is guilty as a person who has broken all of the laws. For the same God who said you must not commit adultery also said you must not murder. So if you murder someone you do not, but do not commit adultery, you've still broken the law. There's only one law, and the law is the law. So, so whatever you say or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law that sets you free. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. So, I mean, this ties it up in a nutshell. I mean, you look at everything going on today, you know, and all the prejudice and, and the racism and just, you know, getting out of hand. But they did have trouble with it, you know, back when this was written, which was probably written, you know, 
within 50 years of, of Jesus' death. But yes, people have always favored the, the, you know, the rich people and the people with their fancy dresses because people want that, you know. It goes back to the love of money, you know, being the root of evil. And most of the, if you look at the celebrities today and a lot of the rich politicians and, you know, just rich people in general, you know, not all of them, but rich people in general, Jesus said it's harder for a rich man to get into heaven than it is, you know, for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. But he said, harder. He did not say impossible. And he said, but with, but right after that, he said, but with God, all things are possible. So, yeah, rich people can go to heaven. You know, will they be rich in heaven? I think everybody will be the same in heaven, but. You know, will some people be favored over others? Who knows, you know. I've always said, I don't care if I'm a street cleaner up there as long as I'm up there, you know. And get to be with Jesus and talk to some of the people that went before us. You know, that'd be fun. But, yeah, it never ends. I mean, you could do a whole series just on, you know, it's on these first 12 verses in James 2. But we'll continue. Faith without good deeds is dead. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you have faith but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing and you say, Goodbye, have a good day, stay warm and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Now some may argue some people have faith and others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You have, you say you have faith for you believe that there is one God good for you, even if the demons, even the demons believe this. Yeah, yeah the demons know. I mean, the demons know the Bible backwards and forward. They know all the scriptures. They know all the rules. They know what's going to happen. Hmm. And they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? And it's, it's, it's always been an, an argument, and we'll, we'll go back um, to the starting of it. You know, good people can go to heaven, you know, without faith. Faith, faith means a belief in Jesus, belief in God, and everything they did. Okay? And by believing and having faith in everything they did you will just naturally do good you know do good deeds you're going to help somebody if they see they need help you know if they see they need food you know it's, it's just something you'll do you know while some people you know rich people go back to the rich people will say oh bless you I'll, I'll say a prayer for you you know now get off my porch and you know there's no faith in that but if you only do, there are lots of philanthropists in the world today who do lots of good things and and feed the poor and all this stuff. But they have no faith. They're not Christians. They're doing it strictly for the reward and notoriety of, of you know, look what I'm doing. Look at me. Look at me. And, you know, Jesus said, you know, when he was walking... If you do a good deed and then brag about it, that's the only reward you're going to get. But if you do good deeds and keep it private, you know, I've I've helped people and didn't even know I was the one helping them, you know, or, you know, I've, you know, helped somebody or, you know, given them some food, bought them a meal, you know, helped them pay a bill and not told anybody because of nobody business, you know, those rewards are in heaven. So. I mean, faith without good deeds is dead. So, because if you have faith, you're just naturally going to want to help people. You know, if you have faith in God and you're following Jesus, you see what Jesus did. Jesus fed the hungry and he did everything he could for them. You know, so faith without deeds is dead, but deeds without faith is also dead. 
Ja. Hm. So, what we say? Faith without good deeds is useless. And at the same time, good deeds without faith is useless. No. Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac to the altar? You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. And so what happened, just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called a friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Okay. Yeah, by what we do, not by faith alone. So, I mean, if you have faith, but you don't have a, you know, and you're Christian and you're going to church and, you know, you play the songs on the radio and you read your Bible... And you don't have a natural desire to help people, you know. I mean, I have, when I was, you know, I've been, I've been dirt broke poor. And I have been in very good circumstances. And I noticed when I was at my lowest point, the people that helped me the most, the people you could always get a meal from or help, a place to stay, were always the poorest people. I had the most faith. You know, very seldom a rich person. I've, I've been in all, you know, in most positions. And I've noticed, you know, poor people, they do good deeds and they have the most faith because they have to count on God, you know, probably more than people who have a lot of money who thinks, well, my money's going to, you know. And there was somebody who Jesus told a story, you know, it was a parable. You know, it wasn't real. It was a parable. He said there was a man that, you know, saved all his money and, and he, his his silos were full and the crops were full and the barn was full. And he says, I've stocked up for many years. Now I don't have to do anything. Let's party. You know, that's paraphrased, of course. And Jesus said, you're a fool. This very night, your life will be required of you. And then where will all your riches be? That's how rich people don't understand, you know. At some point, you know, God's going to turn the switch off, and then where are they going to be, you know, without their faith? So, you got to have both. Rahab the prostitute is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Just as the body is dead without breath, also faith is dead without good works. So, I mean, you know, James isn't talking so much about you know, rich people just doing good deeds and look at all the good deeds they've done. He was a, such a good person. You know, he's talking about people in all walks of life. If you have the faith that the Bible talks about, you're automatically going to want to help people that are less fortunate than yourselves. You know, it's just the way it goes. You know, that was a short chapter. But I think we'll leave it there and let you dwell on that. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. And we'll get back. We can jump over to um, to the New International Version real quick and see if it words anything you know, differently. My brothers and sisters, believe in our glorious Lord Jesus who, who must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes and a poor man, filthy clothes, also comes in if you so special attention to the man wearing a fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, stand over there, sit on the floor by my feet, have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? Yes, that's what I was saying. God has chosen the poor to be rich in faith. And I have, when I have been down, in a, you know, in my 55-year walk with Jesus, I have always found that the poor people were the richest in faith. And by being rich in faith, you automatically want to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, But you have dishonored the poor. It is, is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him to whom... Be 
you belong. If you really keep if you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you're doing right. But if you show favoritism, you you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the law, the whole law, and stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said you shall not commit adultery also said you shall not commit murder. If you, didn't, if you do not commit adultery, but you do commit murder, you become a lawbreaker. <laughs> Speak and act as those who are, doing, are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Means forgive, you know. Jesus said to forgive everybody. And to even pray for your enemies. So, in the NIV, I mean, it's short. We'll read the rest of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such, can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes or daily, and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and be well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, and I have my good deeds. You know, philanthropist, that's what they call it today. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on, on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, it was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave a lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. So there's both versions. And it's a short study. Good time. Any questions? Feel free to ask. Until next time, we'll, we will talk about James 3 and controlling your tongue. That'll be a fun one. See you next time.